interview today. I'm your host, Rich. Here we have Rich TV Live with a very special guest, Ghassan Halazan, the CEO of Emerge Commerce. How are you doing today, Ghassan? I'm great, Rich. Good to be with you. I'm a, I'm a fan of the program. Very excited to have you on the show and learn more about your company. Why don't we get started by you telling us a little bit about yourself and how you got involved with Emerge Commerce. Absolutely. Um, so, as you mentioned, I'm the founder and CEO of Emerge. We've been in business for about five years now. Uh, my background is in investment banking and in e-commerce. I've been doing uh, e-commerce for about a decade plus now. Uh, you know, building, acquiring, selling, restructuring e-commerce businesses for a living, um, and you know, leveraging some of my background in capital markets, in M and A. Really, we put together what we think is the smarter way to scale e-commerce companies, and that's to say, buying is a far more cost-effective means to arrive at scale than building it from the ground up. So we're going out there and, and, and basically putting together a preeminent portfolio of digital brands online in e-commerce. That's exciting. Now, we love to understand the milestones that you're looking to achieve. Can you talk a little bit about the milestones that you've achieved so far in the first nine months of 2021 and what you're looking to achieve for the remainder of 2021? Sure, so we went public uh, here in Toronto on uh, the, the, the TSXV um, December of last year and you know, pretty much since then um, our focus as an M&A driven business is to obviously acquire quality uh, acquisition targets and we've, we've done just that. You know, within two weeks of going public, pretty much by Jan 4, we announced our landmark transaction of acquiring True Local, uh, TRU Local. It is the market leader in premium meat subscriptions, so it connects local farmers with a digitally savvy health conscious audience looking to save on meat delivery, monthly meat delivery uh, through frozen boxes, so things like grass-fed grass beef, chicken, uh, seafood, bacon, um, and, uh, and from that perspective, that business basically tripled our revenue at the time from about $9 million at the time of going public to just under $30 million. Um, more recently, in fact yesterday, uh, we announced the closing of our uh, Battlebox Group transaction. So Battlebox Group is um, an outdoor gear, uh, camping, hiking, uh, goods subscription box business that comes with its sister site, Carnivore Club, which is a cured meats business. Uh, all that's to say we've acquired another about $28 million in revenue and about $4 million in EBITDA, importantly. Wow. Um, so that puts us uh, at a collective sort of 5x from the time we went public um, in terms of the acquisition firepower that we've brought on both in revenue as well as in EBITDA. That's something we pride ourselves on, uh, really sort of that disciplined uh, M&A and capital allocation approach that we've given uh, uh, our portfolio and then from a pure operating and business perspective uh, we've been able to uh, we've only reported two quarters so Q1 and Q2 obviously Q3 is on the horizon uh, but we've delivered triple digit revenue growth in both quarters obviously to some extent M&A driven but we keep our, our pulse on the organic growth as well and we've also now delivered six consecutive quarters of adjusted EBITDA positive so to my point we're doing this sustainably, we're building it up brick by brick, acquiring top-notch e-commerce assets and putting them together in a portfolio where they share resources, technology, data, M&A, capital markets. Fantastic. Now here at Rich TV Lab, we love to really understand the fundamentals of the company and the team behind the deal. Can you talk a little bit about your key members and what they bring to the table and especially any experience they have in capital markets? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I think we've been very fortunate. Um, I've been surrounded by a plethora of uh, experience in M&A, capital markets, um, you know, e-commerce and tech at large. A lot of great folks around us, but starting with, you know, of course, the, the, the immediate management team, uh, Jonathan Leon, our CFO, uh, came most recently from a billion dollar roll-up in veterinary clinics. Uh, called Fed Strategy, private equity back name. Uh, originally was the CFO at Afria, the original CFO in, in Afria. Um, you know, we have uh, George Marucos joined us from Dian Durham, which is again a big Canadian legal software roll up story. 
now a $3 billion plus market cap. He was on the senior leadership team at Diane Durham. Uh, joins us and heads up the m and uh, business, which as you know is a big part of uh, our approach uh, uh, and, and sort of strategy. Um, Fazlo Kaiski uh, is our COO. Uh, he joined us from the original rollup. We acquired a company called Bytopia, which was Michelle Romano's uh, business from uh, Clearco and Dragons then. Uh, so we acquired her original deals business. They had collectively sold Snap Saves to Groupon, which was a cashback rewards app. Um, and uh, you know, so from our perspective, that's sort of that core management team. Um, as, as I said, I come from a capital markets background myself with about 10 years plus uh, in e-commerce, but prior to that with my days at Citigroup in New York uh, on, on Wall Street. We have other great folks, our chairman and our partner here, Drew Green from Indochino, uh, is, is obviously uh, someone who's been involved in the capital markets uh, heavily alongside uh, various of our other partners. Um, and from that perspective, we feel that we have a lot of uh, um, firepower for both M&A as well as capital markets combined with, with our e-commerce well. That's exciting. It sounds like you have a dream team that you've put together to really build this company. And I was looking at your portfolio of companies that you guys have really been putting together. You mentioned some of them, Battlebox, Carnivore Club, True Local. These are assets that you've acquired, that you really, you've really put into the company. And m my question is, what's the potential growth for these assets? What, how big can they scale? What's the potential, potential revenue for these companies? Can you speak on those assets and what the potential is for them? Yeah, it's always nice to talk uh, potential in, in blue skies, but let's start with what they've been doing and how they've been growing because I think that's very telling of uh, the caliber of, of the assets that we're, we're sitting on. Uh, True Local is a business that we, we acquired in December of 2020. Uh, they had just grown from $9 million a year in revenue to $20 million wow. a year in, in that year. Of course, big pandemic dri driven push and awareness and grocery online was a big theme. Um, there were a lot of questions around, you know, does that $20 million go back to 15 or to nine even, uh, or, or, or is this the new norm? And, and so far what we've seen is that we are still till today as the world opens up at 2X pre-pandemic volumes. And we're not talking about having a market to be 2X. This is just the new world we're in, which is super exciting to see. So for us, these businesses have healthy organic growth underlying all of that uh, great brand equity and, 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 and incredible customer retention. Um, and so for us, the other example here with Battlebox and Carnivore Club, which come as a portfolio together, um, that's a business that grew 70% in the pandemic year from about 10 million USD to about 17 million USD. Um, and in the recent sort of trading 12 month period that we looked at the deal as of May, uh, 2021, uh, that business was still on a 30% organic growth rate, which shows you that despite the prior year being such a, a, a difficult comp, we're still seeing good organic growth. Keeping in mind, these brands could grow even much larger if we weren't prioritizing a good balance with profitability today. You know, there are a lot of businesses that have burned through boatloads of capital, as, as you know, in tech and in e-commerce especially chasing much bigger scale before reverse engineering profitability if they're lucky to get there. We don't work on luck. We are here to buy disciplined, profitable, strong organic growth businesses. Great. And so for both of those, and frankly, any vertical we enter, we want to see that $100 million opportunity per vertical over the next three to four years. And that's both organically and through tuck-in acquisitions. Wow, that's impressive. Now, it's extremely important to understand your competition. Can you explain what makes you guys unique and different and how you compare to some of your competitors in the e-commerce space? Yeah, absolutely. So, so there's two, two types of competitors that, that we look at. Um, the first one is other consolidators of e-commerce businesses. Um, and so, and that's a big space now. That's a, a very exciting new trend. There's about $10 billion that have been poured into e-commerce consolidators. A lot of that capital and a lot of those big players are focused on the Amazon roll-up opportunity, buying Amazon stores, FBA stores. Uh, we are not an Amazon-specific marketplace uh, consolidator. We actually prefer 
buying proven brands, uh, direct-to-consumer businesses that own their assets, own their customer bases, and are not at the risk of being turned off. We've all heard of the different horror stories of relying too heavily on an Amazon or on a Google or on a Facebook, right? With the, with the flip of a button, you might lose your ranking, you might lose your audience. Uh, so we're really focused on buying these brand-driven businesses like a True Local, like a Battle Box, like an Underpar for golf, um, and owning that ecosystem ourselves. Um, and so that's kind of, for us, the edge is in the authenticity, in the abs absolutely having a direct relationship with the customer, whereas a lot of the other consolidators may be relying on sort of a big giant like Amazon to actually access audience. So that's one big advantage. The other type of competitor is really sort of within each vertical. So, you know, within meets or within golf or within experiences, we have competitors. What I love about our ecosystem is the advantage that we are able to diversify and leverage our collective buying power. So we have two million members. So when we go buy a carnivore club, we already have a true local audience that we can cross sell with, right? And they can share facilities together. They can cross reference, you know, different things that are working on the marketing side or on the data side, we can monetize collectively. So it's, there's power in the diversification and there's frankly power in scale. And so for us, every time we're buying a business, we're not only buying more revenue or more EBITDA, but we're also buying that trove of data and those potential possibilities between the brands that we're sitting on. So for example, a loyalty program is something that we would look at down the line, where when you're shopping here, you're getting points that you can use across any number of different verticals and niches that we're in. That sounds really exciting. Now we love to understand the share structure here at Rich TV Live. We, we're fundamental investors, mostly long-term investors, and we're looking for companies that are undervalued, underappreciated, underexposed. Can you speak on the share structure and how you intend to attract more retail alongside institutional investors? Yeah, absolutely. So we have about 99 million shares outstanding today. Um, and on top of that, we have largely sort of an ESOP uh, uh, options plan for staff, predominantly staff, board, management, and so forth, with, with about uh, a, couple, a couple of million uh, warrants as well from the earlier rounds, most of which, uh, I should say most, probably half of which are out of the money and half of which are in the money. But when all is said and done, you're looking at about 110 uh, million shares under a treasury method that, uh, that on a fully diluted basis. Very good. And if there was one thing you would want shareholders that are watching this interview today to know about your company, what would it be? Yeah, I think, you know, the big thing to highlight for someone just getting to know Emerge is that we're in the business of under-promising and over-delivering. So we've continuously delivered on our ability to acquire better, bigger, and more profitable assets to the point now where um, you know six acquisitions in seven brands in our portfolio today, we're effectively about an acquisition away right now, one acquisition away from arriving at about $100 million in gross sales, what we call GMS or gross merchandise sales. Yeah. And we're basically two acquisitions or so away from arriving at 10 million in EBITDA. Wow. And we think that's a, those are critical milestones to your point about institutional and retail. We think, you know, today, for example, Canaccord Genuity and Raymond James cover the company. Consensus price today is $1.77. Um, we think a lot of research pours in at those scalable levels, right? A couple of deals away or a couple of acquisitions away. Um, and so for us, scale matters, but even more so profitable scale matters. And institutional folks who have started to jump into Emerge, our last couple of rounds um, have been pretty much 50-50 institutional and retail. Today we have over 3,000 shareholders in Emerge. So we have a good retail constituency by virtue of the fact that, frankly, we have 2 million members. And even if we haven't marketed too heavily to them, uh, word has gone out, we get a lot of free press because of our brand awareness and our brand equity, but we've yet to really arrive at a scale that's super exciting for these big institutionals that I think are a game changer from a share price perspective, but I think we're right around the corner where we knock off critical milestones that get us to 100 million top line, 10 million in EBITDA, and I think we're right there and I think two research analysts become 
four, five, eight, you know, and, and, and I think you know, that institutional presence starts becoming bigger and bigger. And of course, the retail network, by virtue of it being a consumer play, will always be a strong component. We have investors all over the world that are going to see this interview, that are going to be learning more about your company. What's the best way for them to get in contact with you if they have any questions? So we, we have an investor at emerge-brands.com address. Um, uh, we answer very promptly through our IR uh, unit. Obviously, we're very active. I'm personally very active on LinkedIn. Um, and of course, if you need to reach me directly as well, just reach out to investor at emerge-brands.com or access me through gasan at emerge-brands.com and we'll, one of us will uh, we'll get back to you in short order. Fantastic. Now, I must remind you guys that are watching, if you like these videos, please smash the like button, comment down below, share the video everywhere, and subscribe. Rich TV Live is strictly for information and education purposes. Please do your due diligence, do your research before you invest in anything that we talk about or discuss here on Rich TV Live. In saying that, I believe this company is undervalued, underappreciated, underexposed. Thank you so much for joining us today, Gassan. Thanks so much, Rich, for having us. Always a pleasure. If you're not winning, you're not watching, we bring you the winners and we bring them to you first. Thank you for watching, everybody. Have a nice day.